a database. So this database now we're talking, we'll be talking about the common data service as one of the key features of the Power Platform. If Foyin is here, can she just quickly chip in what she wants to do? Hello, Foyin, are you there? Hello? I don't think she's there yet. Okay. okay. Before she comes, maybe I should just start so that um, we're able to make use adequate use of our time. Okay, so quickly, for those who are joining us for the first time, we're talking about the Power Platform. So the Power Platform is actually um, is a, a web service. Uh, so when I say web service, it's a service-based platform by Microsoft that you can actually use to build applications. You can also use it to build, you know, automate processes. You can, you can, you know, do insights from this uh, application that you built. Of course, after you must have used the application to gather your data and also to automate, automate the processes. You can build insights. You can get, you can build dashboard from from the data you must have collected. You can also build a bot with the with the help of the Power Virtual Agent. So this Nigeria Power Series, we're looking at a device tracking application where as, an, as someone who belongs to an organization, you want to request for a new laptop. So you have the option of, you have the option of going through this, uh, the different manufacturers of the laptops and you're able to select one from the array of laptops that you have. So in, the two, in, the pre, in previous episodes, what we look at is how to build this application from a data source. So our data source was an Excel sheet where we had all of the laptops, the manufacturers, and uh, um, the prices and the likes already, you know, built in an Excel. So we had two different worksheets. So they were related with a primary key. I think that was that's the manufacturer. So we now built that application to the point that you are able to select the laptop of your choice. So today, what we're going to be looking at is, you, so after making your choice, you need to be able to submit it so that it goes for approval. So once you submit, it is stored in a database, then before it now goes for approval. So the part that we're going to be looking at is how to now store your selected device into a database. So the database that we'll be talking about is the common data service. For those of us who are used to this system, I'm sure that we know about, uh, okay, let me just say, we know that we know about Excel. Excel is like a database too. We also have a SharePoint list. Hello. So we have we have SharePoint we have SharePoint list also. We have them um, SQL database and host of you know data sources like that. So, but we are going to be like looking at the CDS. Um, so, what is the CDS? Like I said earlier, the CDS is also like a data another data source, just like SharePoint list, just like the Excel sheet that we are used to. And also just like um, like a like SQL database where you just need to, where you need to store your data. Now the CDS is easy to use. So unlike you creating an SQL an SQL table or an SQL database, you know the interface here is very intuitive and easy to, easy for for you to use. So we use that. So, like I said, the CDS, what it does is it, it adds a data storage and modeling capabilities to your power apps, of course, which makes it very scalable at the point of provisioning. So, in this module, like I said, we're going to be creating the, the table for our device ordering. So, we hello, need a CDS. Hello. Hello, hello can you hear me? Can you hear yes? me? I don't know whether you're projecting because none of us can see your screen. I don't know as you're talking if you're projecting. Okay, okay, so I haven't projected yet. Okay, then. All right, no problem. Can we see my screen, right? Hello? It's coming yes, up. Yes, yes. Yes, you can see. yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, okay so 
like I said, we didn't. So the CDS can be likened to a database. So within a data within a database, we know that of course we can we can create we create tables within a database. Then when you create tables, just like we have in our Excel sheet, within the table we also have uh, records. So you have the records which are like rows within within your table. So this is, can also be likened in CDS. In CDS we call tables entities. So we, we call them entities. So already when you provision your CDS, you would see these entities, standard entities that have been already created, that have been created already. So we also look at some of the uh, standard entities that have been created. So within your entities, we also add, we have fields. Fields are like columns within your entities. So like I said, for those of us who are not used to some of these things, so just look at the entity like a table, like a table you, you create in um, Microsoft Word or in Excel. So within that table, you can create different uh, columns. So those columns here are called, they are called fields. So it's as simple as that. And again, like I said, when you create a CDS, there are standard tables that comes by, by default, uh, standard tables that come by, by default. So there are also standard fields, there are fields that come by default. So you can also create your, you can create a custom, uh, custom entity, you can also create a custom field. So we are going to look at all of this. So I'll switch to my environments now for us to look at what we're talking about. Okay, so I'm sure we are familiar with this environment. We used to uh, our app. So from here, when you look at on the left, on the left hand side, on the left hand side of the browser, you would see the entities. You can see the entities on the left hand side here. Yeah, it's clear. So when you come to entities, like I said, you will see the standard entities here. For instance, let's look at accounts. For instance, this is a standard entity. So what are standard entities? Like I said, they are pre-created or pre-built entities. So they are there for you to quickly use. If at all you want to create an entity that looks like this, for instance, if you want to create an account entity, you don't need to stress yourself recreating from scratch. All you need to do is just to pick one of the existing entities and fly with it. So accounts, for instance, is a standard entity. You go through this entity, you would see, like I said, you see fields that have been defined within that entity. So, like these are these are fields that have been that are defined within this entity. They have their name, the data type. So we we'll also look at the data type. So the data type that we're talking about here is, for instance, if I want to create, we have like a text field. So the text field means that you are just looking at that entity taking just text. We we'll also have option set. So option set. They are predefined options. For instance, if I need to know the gender of someone, in that case, I need to use an option set, which means that it can either be a male or a female. So the essence of this is that you don't want a situation where you, you leave it at this test field and somebody enters a M or an F or a F, whereas you just need male or female for purpose of uh, building uh, insight. So you need some of these things. So it enables, it allows your data to be, you know, to be refined. To, you need to specify the field type. So within this, within the entity also, you also see relationships. So relationships are like the uh, interaction between one entity and the other. So it can come in one to many, it can be many to many, and it can be many to one. So that's how the relationship can can be. We also have business rules. So when we say business rules, there are rules around uh, their conditions and actions around the entity. So for instance, you want to say, okay, for this column, if a condition is met, then this social action should be taken. So why we why we will be creating our device order entity? We also create a business rule to demonstrate this. We also have views. So you can also create views to specify the columns that you want to see based on different conditions. You can create that. 
We also have forms. Of course, you can also create form from your from the fields that you've you've created. We have dashboards like the name implies. So it just it helps you to bring your views, charts, and web and your resources in in a place. We also have uh, charts. So this chart also you can use it to display some level of um, you can use it to view your your data in an insightful and graphical in an insightful and graphical way. We also have the keys. So what the keys does is that it enforces uniqueness. So for every for every entity, you need to have uh, keys. So those keys are actually unique to that. So it means that you cannot have duplicate data within that field. And finally, we have the data. So whatever data that you must have collected within this entity can be viewed from this place. So like I mentioned earlier, we So these are options. So we have predefined option sets. We actually call them a standard of so anything predefined uh, within the CDS is known as is actually known as uh, standard. So while our option set is trying to do, we see the different options that have been pre-created. Like I said, for standard entities also. So these these ones are there for you to use. You don't need so they be, for instance a yes or no boolean. So you can have like a question to say, uh, did you do this? Yes or no. So it's already there. You don't need to create it yourself. But for our device order or entities that we'll be creating, we'll create our own option set and approval status where you have an approve or a reject. So having said that, we now create our now we need to create our entity. So recall. The CDS is just like a database. Within your database, you can have tables which are, which are called entities within in, in, in CDS. So within your entities, we also have fields. So field has, fields are like columns. So that's just, that's just like a quick recap. So for us to create our device order entity, I'll go back to entities and click on new entity, which is here. So in this display name, I'll call it device device order so i'm just going to put an entity here i want to call it device order entity so it's not so i'm just putting entity because i already created device order so just to distinguish that's why i'm putting entity now there's a plural display name automatically what cds pluralizes that your display name so it uses it for its own backend uh for its own back backend activity so this is an internet name for it. Then you, the display name, this display name, for those of us that are familiar or conversant with SharePoint list, you find out that if you create a SharePoint list by default, there's a title column that comes with it. So it's the same case here. So when you create an entity, this, this, this name field is created by default. So you can change it to one of the columns that you want within your, within your entity. So here, I'll call this device name. And notice the name that is captured here. They remove the space here. Now, because now because we because we oops, sorry because we need attachments within within this our entity. I will check enable attachments. I, I'll click on more settings. So I don't need any other thing here. I'll click on create. So I'll say okay. So my entity is created. So I want to be sure that we're following. Sorry, am I, is there any, are we, can we clearly see the screen? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, that's yes, fine. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we have been able to create our entity, which is this. So by default, you see the standard fields that are created along with this. For instance, created by, created on, and the lights. So these are standard entities that are automatically created. So we want to create our own fields. So one of the fields that we need within within this our entity is um, device order um, is price. We need to create a price field. So I'll click on add field. Then the display name I'll put price. If you remember that there is price within 
the device order request app that we created. So we need to create a device uh, a price column. So here, yeah, because price has to do with currency, so the data type here has to be currency. So don't forget, like I said, when you are creating your field, you need to you need to know the kind of data type that it should be. So you can see the different data types that are here. But in this case, price is related to currency. So we're going to choose currency in this case. So having selected currency, we are going to make the require uh, the field. We are going to make this required field required. So it means that we want this field to be filled by the. Uh, uh, it's 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 composite that you sell that you fill this field. So the beauty of this CDS again is that there are these icons here that you can click on to read some of these things. So it tells you clearly the options within this uh, drop down. So optional, recommended, and the like. So you can read them to see the essence of this field. So searchable. If you want, if you say searchable, why? You can also read it here. So it's for you to be able to search for this field when you're in a modern uh, driven app. So you can see some of these things here. So we're fine with the price here. So, OK, one thing. So we want to have a maximum and a minimum for this price. So I'll go to advanced option. The minimum amount should be zero. Why the maximum should be 5,000? So we have, we have done that. Then we click on done. So all of these things, because it's, of course, because I'm explaining, that's why it's taking this time. So imagine that you are creating it yourself, that you don't need to explain. So you are just doing all of this in a twinkle of an eye. So having created the price. So this price would actually create another base, another column called the, uh, the price base. I'll show us that later when we save, and I'll tell us the essence, the essence of uh, the essence of that. So another column that we also want to create is requested, requested by. So who is the person that is making this request? Requested by. So this requested by, we're going to make it uh, an email data type. We want to make it an email data type. So here. I'll make it an email because I actually want to get the person's email for for the uh, for so because when we get to Power Automate, where we'll be, we'll be triggering a uh, workflow, we will actually need this email. So that's why we are using this. So here we can make it required too. So searchable, then done. So another column that we also need is uh, the request date. We want to want to know the request date. When was this request? made so we have request date data type of course will be dates once just date only is it optional or so we can leave it it's not optional it's required so done so another column that we need is also uh, we need the approver who is the person that would approve this we also need to get somebody who is going to approve. So we'll make this person an email because we're going to send an email to that person. So we also need comments. We need comments. So this comment should be a multi line of text. So, of course, because the person's comments might want to be more than 256. So we, can, we should make this a multi line of text. Multi line of text. Say done. We also need uh, the the estimated cheap dates. Estimated cheap dates. So this cheap date is okay after approval of the device by my manager or whoever. When am I expecting this uh, device to get to me? So this field is a field that would is going to be a date. Of course, it's going to be a date. So I'll select date date only then i'll click on done another column that i want to have is approved date so which date approved date so this should be date only also done so um, which other column is necessary? I'm trying to think about another column that is necessary. Um, 
So we also need um, approval status. So we need approval status. Approval status. So here we need an option set of approve or reject. So we go to the data type. So where we look for option set. Option set. Because there are standard option sets, then but none of them has approve and reject. So we're going to create our own custom option set, which will go to new option set here. Then I will put, I will override this. Uh, I will have approve, right? Here I'll put reject. Reject. So we have created our option set and we're making it approve or reject, right? This is clear. Are we, are we together, please? Yes, we are. Okay, okay, so let me go ahead. Okay, so he's saying that um, an option set with this name already exists, of course, because I already created one with same name. So what I will do is, let me just, uh, let me change it to say, uh, let me just use approval status. Let me say approval status. I'll, I'll just change this spelling. So this is it. So this way we have created another option set called approval status. So I'll save this. So, so here we have approval status, or still let me call it approval. Okay, it already exists, so let me call it approval. Let me just play around this. So there's no default, and um, I just click on done. So having created this, we can save our entity now. So we can go through this and see the columns that we created. You can see them in bold. Um, yes, yes, yes. So having done this, these are the fields that we need. So we can now we can save our entity. So let me. Okay. So like I said earlier, you know, we when we created price, which is this. So the system automatically creates another column called price and puts base in front of. So the essence of this is that. So because the system recognizes the fact that different countries have different currencies. So there's a standard currency for this. And of course, there, there might be times that you want to do currency conversion. So there's a base currency that it works with to be able to do this uh, conversion. So he uses this internally for his own operation too. So anything that has to do with currency, it duplicates it and adds a base, uh, a base, a base uh, column to it. So the next thing for us to now do, we want to we want to create a calculated field. So the essence of this calculated field is because if you remember that we created, uh, if you remember that we created uh, estimated, uh, what's it called? We created estimated uh, uh, cheap shipping dates. So because the essence of that is that we want to be want to calculate automatically, want to add 14 days to the approved date. So what we're doing here is that we want to create, we want to create another field called department contribution. So the essence of the department contribution is that for every uh, laptop that is raised, there has to be like a 10% of the department budget has to go with it. So how do we calculate this? It has to be 0.1 of the price, uh, price column that we already created. So I want a field. And I'll call this uh, department, department contribution. So we'll call this department contribution. So the currency would be, uh, okay, the, the data type will be currency. So because, like I said, it's a calculated column. We want to make it a calculated column. So I'll come to calculated or roll up, then I'll click add calculation. So once I click on calculation, this pop-up this pop up comes, then I'll click on save.
So while it is trying to save, it's, it shows another uh, pop-up where we can now set the condition and action. So like, okay, it, like, so, so like a quick recap, what I said is, we want to calculate, we, we are creating a column that is a calculated column. And the essence is that we want to be able to calculate 10% of the price and attribute it to the department contribution. So because we don't want whoever is entering, ordering this device to be doing the calculation in, in, himself or herself. So what we're doing is we're automatically calculating 10% of the price as the department, uh, as the department contribution. So I'll click on this again and um, click on uh, open calculation. So it's trying to come up. Can we see the pop-up, please? Yes, yes. Yes. OK, so the set department contribution. So we want to add an action to say that just multiply the price. So we just go to price. You know, we already created the price column. So we select the price times 0 0.1. Are we are we on the same page, right? So no, this way we have said. Hello. You said? Sorry? I thought we're still on the same page. Can we see set department contribution? No, the no. pop up is still there. The currently editing a calculated field is still what is displayed. Oh, okay, okay. It's a pop up. That means it didn't show that. Let me just let me show it. Okay, yeah, it pop up. Yes, okay. we can see. Okay, so it brought this pop up. So and I okay, let me close it and so that okay. So it brought this pop up. At this point, you can define conditions for it to set this uh, department contribution. But because there's no condition, I can even say okay, the condition is that whenever the price is entered, if the price is not empty, then set the action. But I don't need that condition. What I just want to do is I want to multiply the price by 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. So that's all. So whenever the price is set. The department contribution is automatically calculated. So I'll click on this save your changes. Then I'll go to save, save and close. Right. Yes. OK, so I have to go back to. OK, so it's done. So I've we'll set we have set that now. So again, it also creates Another base currency for this automatically. So I've explained that before. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a business rule. So like I said, the business rule is to set the estimated delivery date. The estimated delivery date, which is 14 days after the approval of the order. So the approval comes from whoever is assigned to approve. So how do we do that? We go to our so we go to our entity and click on business rules. So there's none at the moment. So I'll click on add business rule. It opens a new tab. Can we see the new tab, please? Yes, yes please. Yes. Okay, you can you can see the this business rule uh, environment. Um, Hello? Yes, the brand. We can see it. Okay. Okay, fine. So by default, you would see device order entity. Then you see the new business. So at this point, we need to we need to give our business rule a name. Please someone right. should mute. Uh, someone should mute their mics. Uh, their mic. Uh, I'm getting feedback. Yeah. Okay, let me just do that. Let me see. Okay, that has been done. Okay. Okay, so so, so at this point, we need to rename our business entity, the, the, the name of the rule. So we say calculated uh, cheap dates. So if you have any description that you want to put here, we can say yes, okay. Just set the 
estimated ship date. That's fine. So I can collapse this back. So I click on this condition. So if I click, when I click on this condition, so what's the condition? The condition is that whenever the approve, approval date is set, so because you know we have, we have somebody who is approving this request, whenever that person approves this request, of course, it means that the approval date would have been would have been uh, filled. So whenever the approval date is set, then this calculation should take place. It should add the 14 days to the, to the approval date. So I'll click on this and say the condition should be check ship date or no check approve check approval date so so the entity this is our entity that we created so we we'll look at the entity source which field are we looking at we are looking at the uh we are looking at the approval date which is this so whenever this approval date contains data, this is the operator. So you have different operators there, depending on what you are working on, maybe text or numbers or the like. So we're saying that whenever this contains data, what should happen, right? So that's the condition. So I'll click on apply, apply. So the moment I do that, you would see that this, this will change. Also, there's a business rule text view here. This will also change. So approval date contains data. So I haven't done that. I will now come to add. What do I want to do? What should happen when that approved date contains data? So I'll click on add. Set feed value. So what was the feed value? The estimated shipping date. I want to set a value there. So which is which is this? Now remember that this is a condition. A condition will always come with true or false. So this is the true and this is the false. So I'll click on this true. Whenever it is true, what should happen, which is this? The new action should be that uh, I want to set, I want to set the estimated shipping date, right? So I want to set estimated So what do I want to set it to? I will now say, well, the field should be estimated ship date. Yes. What's the value? So it's a formula. I want to do a formula. What's the formula? I want to add the approved date plus 14 days. So it's a formula. So which is the approved date? Yes. Plus value, which is what? 14. Is, is, this, is it clear? Is this side clear, please? Yes, very much clear. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So I'll click on apply. So you would see that immediately I clicked on apply. This business rule here is updated. If approved date contains data, then set this value approved days plus 14 days. So I haven't done that. I'll now click on validate. So I want to validate this rule that I have done. So if there are errors, of course, it will show errors. If they are not, then it will. It will it shows a validation successful. So it shows that our rule is fine. Then the next thing for us to now do is to save it. So I can now save. So I haven't saved. I have to activate it. So I have to activate it for it to, to take effect. Hello, Brian. Yes, please. Yeah, just a quick one uh, while that is still loading. Uh, in the in the event there is no data in the uh, there is no data. What will be your what will be your next line of action? So there is no data where sorry. For okay, example, if there's no if there's if there are data, yes. If the, okay, so that means it doesn't trigger. That means this nothing happens here. So it depends okay. on what you want to do. Mm, so for instance, you know, there's another leg that says no. If there is no, so nothing happens because we didn't define, we didn't define any action for that part. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. 
So do you want to activate this? Uh, yes, so activate. So it depends on what we are building on our own. So you can want to, you might want to, you know, activate a condition, uh, activate uh, something for the no part and so another thing for the yes part. So I haven't done this. I can go back to my power apps and click on done. So fine, so it shows here, so it's activated. So we have been able to define the business rules. We have been able to also do, uh, do a calculation for our, uh, what's it called? We'll also be able to do a calculation within our entity. So that's just basically what we need to do on the side on the side of our CDS. So the next thing for us to now look at is how to now connect our uh, connect the data from our app, uh, connect the data from the Canvas app. So when you go to your app, you can now connect to this your entity, and you are able to save data here. So I think I think we should take that for the next class. While we, talk, while we take questions around what we have done now. So the so, CDS, OK, OK. Uh, Brian. Yes, yes, please. Sorry, go ahead. Is, sorry. OK, my name is Ola. Thank you so much for the class. OK, you're welcome. I've always been reading about CDS, and it's, it's always been like something out of this world. <laughs> well, this is your training. It's, it's spot on. But one thing I want to, I like some of us, we missed the first two classes. Okay. I think the first one was taken by Foyer and you took the other one, which I think were the foundation to this one. Okay. So I okay. don't know, is, is there a way we can get a link to watch them, the, those two classes, so that we can okay. catch up? Okay, so firstly, thanks for the recommendation. So the other two classes, we started with uh, building uh, the apps and, um, you know, and we have their videos, of course, I, will share, I can share the URL with you. So secondly is that this part that we have done, so it's just to expose us to how the CDS works. So of course, I'm sure we are used to Excel, we are used to, some of us are used to SharePoint list and perhaps some other data sources. But the CDS also is another data source that is robust, that has so many things that those other data sources do not have. And of course, creating the CDS or even working around the CDS is, is so easy that, you know, like one of the, like one of the videos that I also saw, he said, even, even a, a musician can create entity. And from you agree with anybody can create an entity, create a business rule, and of course, so far you know, you, are, you know the columns that you want to create within your app. So, so like I said, I'll share the URL of those two, two other classes with you. You can, you can see them and of course be able to move it. So in the next class, what we're going to do is, we're just going to look at how to now integrate this CDS uh, with our app or our app with the CDS as, 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 as the case may be. So it's as simple as that. Hello, hello Ibrahim. Okay, hello. Okay. Yes, my name is Oladapo, and uh, I want to ask around what uh, you would say is standard practice. Uh, for example, you have organizations who have uh, data in different data sources and majorly on databases, right? Uh, for example, I'm building a power hubs and uh, I have, you know, some of my uh, data, employee data, you know, sitting in the database. Uh, for example, I have my department name of staff and all of that. Now, how do I easily connect to them from PowerHub? That is one. Now, two is yes, there is CDS in PowerHub. What would you What would you advise? Uh, is it that it is you know good and uh, standard practice to recreate this data uh, in a CDS so that it, because CDS works you know uh, seamlessly. You know, within the same container of power hubs, or it is advisable that uh, one should find a way of uh, doing like a, a lookup or something of getting this data from the respective uh, tables or columns within the company's database. I, I don't know if you understand my okay. question. Okay, okay. So if I understand clearly, so there's a database somewhere within the organization. Yes, please. 
which is is on pre is on premises or in the uh, on premises or in the cloud. Uh, most most times on prem. Okay, so so for on premises, you know, the, the the condition is that you have to install a gateway to be able to connect to it. Yes. Okay, so so it now depends. So because I know if you are using CDS, it comes with its own charges. And you agree with like like, like you also said, it, it uh, the integration with uh, Power Apps is seamless, and of course, with some of the benefit of the CDS. So mm -hmm. it's a two-way thing. If they are able to invest, invest in CDS, well, that's that's beautiful because of the advantages and benefits. Else, if they are not, they will have to stick with what they have. Okay. So that's. But of course, if you ask me, I will say the CDS is the way to go. Okay. That's that's my perspective. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Hello, I got Brian. Sorry again. This is Oladipo again. Okay. okay. My question is, although you, I think you answered the bit. So, is CDS um can CDS can be used in place of SharePoint list or perfect, perfect, perfect. But it comes at a cost. Yes, it comes at a cost. Okay. It comes at a cost. Yes. Uh, we are in cost. But you can. Video. You can. But but you can, you can, <laughs> of course, yeah. So it, it, you can, you can still explore it, you can still explore it and see how it works. And I think you just, you, you can still use it to some extent. So okay. it's when you now get to some points where you know, mm. some point that it start asking you for 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 charges. Then on the other hand, you know, like in, when you either your Excel or your SharePoint. Like for all this stuff, you can do a Power BI connection to them. Oh, to perfectly, them. yeah. For your exactly. analysis, how about with the CDS also? Wow, the, the CDS is even is even a more like a more perfect uh, as a more a, a perfect connection from Power BI mm. because well, the CDS can also take millions millions of uh, you know data of records okay. even on like on like SharePoint list. Okay. You know, because the SharePoint list also has its own uh, drawback in terms of the cap, the uh, resource throttling. We yeah. call it resource throttling. At some yeah, at some point it's it start giving you some uh, you know. So the CDS is 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 a cool is a cool uh, platform, a cool okay. database. So, um, for the um, sorry. So when you are connecting Power BI to CDS, what connection you know, as in the case of Excel, you pick Excel or in the case of um, text file, you put CSV or SharePoint, you put SharePoint online. In the case of CDS, what do you pick? Of course, you see there is clear. You see ah. as one of the data, data sources. Yeah, you oh, see okay, it. Okay. You see okay. it, yeah. You see it. Thank you very much, sir. You can just get, you can get your hands dirty on, on it. Maybe during the weekend, you see it there. But is there a, is there a free version? You know, like you don't want to play around on the organization platform with all of these CDS and Power App and some other stuff. Like a free where you can use your personal um, login to play around with instead of organizational. Okay, so if you have if you have uh, if you have the permission, you can create an environment, a test environment. No, no. You can create a, a test environment within no, no, the power. Like on my side, you know, they created only one environment for everyone. Oh, so. okay. And so it still doesn't mean, so what you are just doing, you're just creating, okay, for instance, what we created, this entity that we created now, you know, it's not yeah. something that is uh, cumbersome. Yeah. It's not yeah. us. So you can just create like a contact details or even use the existing the existing uh, entities. You can work with the existing entities. Okay. To try something out. Yes. Right. No problem. Uh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Ibrahim. Can I answer his question? Okay. Please, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, what well, another thing you can do is like creating. I, I I guess you probably want to explore it. Like, and you don't want to tamper with your organization's uh, environment. So I think one thing you can do is creating a developer account. So that will allow you to have your own Office 365 tenants where you can do a lot of exploration on Power Apps, uh, CDS, and the likes. So I think that that's one thing you can actually do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 
Yes, that's a nice suggestion. Oh, okay, thank you very much. I'll I'll work on that also. All right, all right. Then thank if you. you need any assistance on that, you can let us know, please. You know, I always run to you now. <laughs> so sorry. Hi. Good evening, everyone. So evening. in addition, this is for speaking. In addition, we also have Power Apps Community. Um, there's a community like tenants for Power Apps, but the only reason why we usually don't like it's not our default option for users is because it doesn't come with SharePoint, OneDrive, and all the other Office 365 things. Well, it has Power Apps, it has Power Automate, and it has CDS in it. So that can also be an option for exploring Power Apps and CDS um, for you. So I sent, I've sent the, um, the link for the first session that we had and for the last session we had last week. Then also, I don't know, Ibrahim, did you touch on the checkbox? I was trying to, there was a question that was asked last week about the checkbox. You know, we did a checkbox and then when we're clearing the selection, it was not on checking. So I wanted to show how to do that, but I don't know. My laptop was acting up, so I'm joining from my mobile phone. So Ibrahim, I don't know if you showed that already. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello? Sorry, can you hear me? Oh, no, I didn't. But well, let me see. I think if went I can. can you hear me? Okay. 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 I can hear yes, you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. Please, can you help me show that step? I, I, okay. I couldn't log. Okay, I couldn't I can hear you. connect from my laptop. I okay, so the question laptop. was uh, okay. So the question was so the question was around when she on set, when she did uh, compare list and she cleared she clicked on the button. So it didn't clear. So the was supposed to uncheck, but that is uh, app choose what cost that. It's just um, hold on. Let me open the app. And um, okay, so when we were selecting our device options to compare last week, we had a clear selection um, button. So the clear selection button clears out the the collection right is to clear out all the all the systems that you have selected in the collection however it wasn't clearing out the checkbox so the checkbox that i used to select on those devices was not being cleared out so someone asked the question last week about why we we're clicking on clear selection and wasn't on checking the checkbox so that's what we just want to quickly show what you need to do so that when you clear out the selection it it, when you click on clear selection, it clears out the checkbox. So, Ibrahim, can you please share your? Okay, yes, I'm gonna share my, app. my screen right. Here. Share my screen Thank right you. Right. Okay, so, can you see my screen? Hello. Yes, yeah, we can, can now. Screen. Okay, so let's, so we're comparing Aspire U and Aspire. So at this point, when I click clear selection, so this, you can see that it clear these two that I selected. So that didn't have last slides. And this, so for instance, let me click on this device gallery and click on this. So if I click, if I go to the default, the default of this, trying to load well, let me check this okay so did you see the rule here yeah. hello yes we are here yeah we can hear you okay so on so on the checkbox the default is that this this item in compare list. If you remember, the compare list 
was the collection that we created. So when you check one of when you check when you check one of these, it stores that in the information of that particular item into a compare list, which is the collection. So the default of this is saying that this item in you should look at that list and see if this particular item has been picked. Else, so it's just like saying this this item is in. So if I say this item is in compare list, yes or no. That's what it means, but this is, is missing. That's why we're saying this item in compare. Do you get the logic? Yeah, it's fine. I think you understand. Hello. So sorry, actually, Ibrahim. Okay. So that's, you... that was that was what was missing in that last class. Okay. I can hear you clearly, please. Okay. So this that this ah. item in compare list. Okay, I can uh, hear oh, you. Means... Yeah, sorry, I'm just asking. So this item in compare list, that means the result in a true or false, like yes or no. So that's the result, yes, like exactly. yes or no. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So okay. imagine saying that this this item is in, in compare list, yes or no. So if it is no, that's when the checkbox is not. But if it, if it is yes, this is it is this is checked. Do you understand? So if I play it, if I click on, if I click this. You will see that, of course, if I go to complete list, so these are the two. So if I go back, these two are still there. So that's why they are still checked. But if I clear them now, because I've cleared the collection, so there is nothing in the collection again. So it means that these things are kept. So that's just it. Thank you, Ibrahim. Okay. So. This is the end of today's class. I hope we enjoyed it. Um, thank you for keeping in tune, keeping in touch. We hope to see you next week. Yes, yes. please let's, let's try to catch up. Please try to catch up on your own so that you can also be sure that everything that we are teaching, you actually understand it. Because the way power up for what you are watching, you feel that you understand it. But when you start to type your expression, you now start to ask yourself, is it a full stop or a comma that is supposed to come after this item? So if you don't try it out, you will not really know where your learning gaps are. And you won't be able to ask those questions during the session. So please, let's try to. I think, Ibrahim, we also need to share the link to the Excel document, the data source. I think we also have, um, maybe All we can right. start. We can put that with the YouTube channel for the one. So that anybody watching the channel can um, watch the video. Uh, hey, oh, can just see right. in the comment in comment or something that this is the link to the cell, the data sources, and they can work with that. Okay, thank Hi. you. Hello, Fui. Hello. Yes. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Sir. Uh, are you sharing the link uh, within the Telegram group for the previous? Uh, Yes, I think I shared it before. But well, what I will do today is I will compile everything into one message. Session mm -hmm. one, session two, and then the link to the Excel data source. So God that bless. from that single message, you can now access everything directly. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome, sir. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma appreciate okay. it. Thank you. So Thank you very much. Yes. Item seven, item seven. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Ibrahim. Thanks, Wayne. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you next week. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.